call the meeting of the City Council to order for August 27, 2018. Please stand as we salute the American flag. I pledge allegiance Peace to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. King Councils, I know it's a warm evening, so let's hopefully we can get through uh, through things at a, at a rather you know good pace. Um, first, I do want to um, take a moment of silence. I think it's only appropriate that we uh, take a moment of silence for um, a great senator that passed away over the weekend. It was a matter of party affiliations to me. What's important to me is that he was a tremendous man that worked very hard for this country. Um, and I think you all know that. And as a Vietnam vet in the, the uh, other years, the <laughs> I don't want to say served in Vietnam, but also was capsized and, and kept there for so many years, um, showed what type of a human being that he was. And when he got back, he always worked in the great and the best interest of the uh, American people. So I just want to take a moment of silence for uh, Senator John McCain. Thank you. May, uh, may rest in peace. Council Cruz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, President. I'd actually like to take an additional moment of silence. The city of Brockton this week uh, lost a, a great public servant and a great uh, someone who, uh, whose family has done so much for the youth of Brockton. Uh, Mr. Harold C. Bo Marrow passed away. Uh, the Marrow family has been a beacon of light for so many young people in the city of Brockton, and uh, Bo did so much to uh, teach the youth in Brockton whether it was through his lifelong, uh, long-time substitution of Brockton High, coaching different youth sports, and again, his family has done so much, and uh, they're great people, and I'd like to have an additional moment of silence for Bo Marrow. Thank you, Councilor, and we thank, thank him you. for his years of service to the city as well. Um, that being uh, said, I believe we're uh, ready to begin Mr. Clerk. We have acceptance of the minutes of the July 23rd, 2018 City Council meeting. Accepted and placed on file. Under Valais Portis, 92 Marjorie Road, Brockton, to the Brockton Parks Authority to serve the unexpired term of Charles Hickey, expiring October 2019. Referred to the Committee on Finance. We have the hearings. The petition of David Lynch, Lynch's towing, of 30 Quincy Street, Brockton, Mass., for a motor vehicle repair mechanical body license located at 210 North Cary Street. In City Clerk's Office, July 19, 2018. Hearing is signed for August 27, 2018 at 7 p.m. All paperwork is on file. Fire Department does have objections on the body shop. Does not conform to the standards outlined by Mass General Law, CMR, and ROCOB. Pending inspection and approval by the Fire Department of the proper equipment that has been installed the fire department would then have no objections. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. If there's someone here in favor of, please come forward and state your name and address to the clerk. Good, Good evening. evening. My name is Jay McLaughlin. I'm the attorney for Dave Lynch and Lynch's Towing. It's my pleasure to stand before you tonight and speak on his behalf. If I can just be heard for a moment. Speak into the microphone if you can. Oh, Pull yeah, it maybe sure. closer to you. Yes, yeah. the, the, uh, it's not very uh, well heard in here with all the heat and the, the fans. As I said, I'm Jay McLaughlin. I'm the attorney for Dave Lynch and Lynch's Towing. Um, as many of you know, Mr. Lynch has been a, essentially a lifelong citizen of the city of Brockton. He has a business, Lynch's Towing. It's been in business for 32 years. He has 16 full-time employees. He has two applications pending before the city council tonight, one for West Chestnut Street, 790, and one for Cary Street. And uh, if you were to act favorably on those applications, I can represent to the council that Mr. Lynch would be adding to his workforce by at least two employees, if not five employees. By adding uh, the repair license to the uh, West Chestnut location, as well as the auto body uh, license down there, he would be servicing the state police close to the highway. and. Um, I think it would be a great asset for the city of Brockton for him to have that location, which is primarily a commercially zoned business as it is on both sides of the street. As you know, you have the, um, the armory on that side of town and businesses on either side. 
So we're going to ask, ask that you uh, act favorably on that, and, and welcome to take any questions if you have any. Thank you. Mr. Lynch, anything you want to add? Uh... My name is David Lynch, and I'm the owner of Lynch's Towing, sole proprietor. Um, I've, been, I've been working on this 790 West Chestnut Street to get myself closer to the highway to service the state police for Middleborough and Milton. I'm a contract for both ends. Um, I'm asking tonight for a repair license, and I'm asking for an auto body license. Yes, I have not been signed off for the fire department for the body shop. I want to make sure that I'm going to be allowed to have the body shop license first before I go and buy the booth. That's okay. all I'm asking. It's taken me quite some time to get in front of the council, which everyone knows. I'm sorry about all the phone calls. I apologize. Um, again, I am the contractor for the state and for Mass Highway. It is close to the highway that is becoming the new auto mile. And the reason why I want this body shop license so I can re repair and do the body work on the Mass DOT, but I have to ask for the license for your approval before I can go buy the spray booth. Okay. I promise you I'm not trying to do anything outside, anything else. I just want your approval. And then before I go to the clerk, I'll make sure it's signed off properly by the fire department. Okay. I'm just asking for your approval. I don't mean to interrupt, but first off, let's get on the right one. Right now we're talking about 210 North Carey Street, Brockton. So that's the one that's before us first. Sorry, I didn't okay. hear that. I apologize. That's fine. No, 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 no problem. So that's where we are right now. We've heard um, from the attorney, and, and I don't know if you want to add anything to that in regards to Quincy Street. Um, I know you're talking more about West Chestnut Street at this point. But, Thank you. I um, apologize. Okay. Um, is there anyone else um, here that wants to be heard in favor of? Uh, wait, I'll get, is it going to be? First, first off, excuse me. You've got to come up and identify your name and address to, to the microphone so we have it on record, okay? <laughs> microphone, please. And right now, just stay. Before you do, let me just get through the people in favor of, not so much a question whether yes or no, okay? I just want to get through the people that are in favor of. Are you in favor of or are you opposed to? Or just a question? I have a question before I know whether I'm in favor of or opposed to. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. So my big question is... Yeah, in the microphone, the please. So the, so the question is, there's a lot of noise from an adjacent business to my property. I just want to know whether Mr. Lynch's auto body business is going to contribute to that noise before 7 o'clock. No, sir. No, it will not. Now, and, and that was 210 North Carey Street, correct? Uh, my address is 1815 Drive, which is directly Okay. Okay. So you got your answer? Okay. Anybody else here in favor of? Wants to be heard? To clear that part of the hearing close. Anybody here in opposition well, well, to? Well, this city council would like in to. In favor of or opposed to? Well, I, I want to ask a couple of questions because, uh, I mean, I have no problem with it being on uh, West Chestnut Street because no one lives near there. But on uh, 210 North Carey Street, oh, people live there and they live behind there on River Street, okay? And so you're saying here that you would do the auto body repair. It's interesting because I spoke to a business back around the end of March, beginning of April, that said they were going to move in there and do something completely different. And it was going to be relatively quiet. And uh, so this means you'd be open uh, Monday through Saturday. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. I don't want against businesses coming into Brockton, but it just seems that there's a level of disrespect with a lot of businesses working in our community, and I really want to see that end. And one of the things that frustrates me is that okay. we have hours, and Spiegel is notorious for going again, you know, and changing their hours to whatever suits them, and that is a detriment to the community. Also, I am concerned because I'm under the impression someone totals their car on a Saturday night on 24, okay? You tow it, nothing wrong with that. You bring it to 790. They find out that auto body can fix it. When are you going to bring it to your auto body repair? On Monday morning or at 2 in the morning on Saturday, you know, into Sunday? It would be brought, th it, it would be brought there during the week. 
Okay. Um, All right. That's I, a big if thing. If I may, if I may answer that. Yeah. I actually have. I'm one of the only ones who has a 24-hour license. Yeah. I've never been in front of you. I don't leave anything out in front of the shop, and I think my neighbor can attest to it. I don't leave junk cars in front of my building. Yeah. My place is always clean. Oh no, I agree yep. with you. Yeah. I've yes. never. I've always been respectable. Yeah. Oh God, I've been down there 26, 27 years. Mm -hmm. I kept the building clean, painted. Most of the time for weeds and trash and bottles and no, that's true. No, I I'm a member that. of the Montello Business Association also. Yes, but but also what I'm concerned with is sometimes other people are working for you and they might feel like they want to do what they feel like whenever, and that's that's why I get a little concerned sometimes because some you know people get alarmed at what transpires sometimes when they're not at their business. And I know you've been around the block, so I imagine you've experienced that. So that was my big concern. I just wanted to make sure that if someone totals their car on 24 and it goes to um, Crescent, West Chestnut Street, excuse me, that it stays there. And like you said, it turns around and shows up on Monday and Tuesday when someone says, my insurance will pay for this, or blah, 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 and then it gets repaired. Yes. So that's, that was, that yes, was my is. concern. All right, thank you very much. Thank I you very much. That. Yeah. All set, Council? Yes, thank you. Okay. Yes. Is there anybody, uh, anyone here um, opposed to? Anybody here in opposition to? All right, I declare that part of the hearing closed. So at this, at this point in time. Mr. Chairman, questions further? Right, we are. For, further questions, if we could? Go ahead, Councillor. I, I just missed the hours of operation, Mr. Lynch, or Attorney McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. if, I could, if I could have 7.30 to 6, would that? 7.36, a.m. to 6 p.m. Is that okay with my neighbor? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that okay? Monday through Saturday, okay. And uh, I assume there's been a parking plan submitted, and uh, do we know how many vehicles would be? Uh, how large is that piece of property, 210 North Cary? Uh, uh, 0.98 acres, 0.98 of an acre. It's almost yeah, one it's, acre. It's long. Okay. It's and long. It holds 100. Hold, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm licensed for 125 cars. Okay. Okay. All right. So now, how many would you indicate would be attached to the the repair and auto body shop? How many would you expect to have on property with respect to to that business, or are you encompassing it all in what you have now? You would have my word. Everything will be kept behind the building, nothing out front. I've made those okay. with the counselor, Mr. DiNapoli, who was there before. No vending machines, no pay phones, I keep the trash clean, and everything goes behind the building. I, I have okay. no lights on at night when we're bringing cars in, when we do bring them in. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. All sent. Councilor Fowle? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Please, you, you, please you, have, you have to come up to the microphone, ma'am. Sorry. State your name and address. Well, restate it again. I don't re recall it. Allison Frolliger. I live at 18 Ashfield Drive, uh, right across the street from your new business. Um, my question is, I want to make sure that cars aren't going to be towed into there late at night, past like all hours of the night and making noise with reverse beeping of the tow trucks and stuff like that to wake people up at one o'clock in the morning. That's, I'm sorry, what we did when we were granted our license 20, I'm sorry, when we were granted our license 25 years ago, we promised the neighbors and the city council we would never go through the front gate, that we would always use the side gate. We do tow 24 hours, and we're still using it for all these years. We just don't go through the front gate. Okay. We actually have, we actually have two entrances, if anybody's ever seen the shop. We don't go through the front. We go through the side gate. Okay, so, so now that it, Council Fowle. Uh, and I apologize, Mr. Chairman. There's one last thing. I know you won't sure. operate before 730, but I'd like to have a stipulation that you won't have a dumpster being emptied before 7.30 in the morning because I know that goes on in the city and it brings about some complaints. So I, uh, I, will, I will instruct the trash company not to be there before 7.30. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Just so we all understand, we have two things that are before us on this particular license, and it, it is the motor vehicle repair mechanical license, and then there's also one for a, a vehicle repair body license. We're voting right now on the mechanical one, is that correct, Mr. Clerk? Correct. Right. So that's motion to grant. Second. 
Motion's been made um, and to seconded hear. to vote on that item. And granting all in favor? Opposed? And that's the one in the mechanical um, license one. Now, in regards to the um, uh, repair uh, body license, I believe that is something we have to wait until is in place, everything's in place, and, and uh, the fire department inspects, and, and then we're able to, or he's able to obtain that license. Mr. That President, Mr. Also President, just point of uh, inquiry. We just voted on the motor vehicle body license at 210 North Cary Street. That's all that's in front of us right now, correct? Oh, mechanical. Just voted on the mechanical. Mechan mechanical is not what's written in the agenda. I beg your pardon? The agenda is for a motor vehicle repair body license that is located at 210. Oh, yeah. Councilor, right. that is mechanical slash body. That should be slash body. It is slashed if you look at it closely. Motor vehicle repair. Yeah, we've already we've already have the existing repair okay. license. We're we're strictly All here those, for the those go for the body. When there's an the auto body license for both licenses, that's how it's worded. Okay. Why don't we just vote? So, so we just ahead. voted to, and I'm fine. I just want to make sure I know. We just voted to approve a motor vehicle repair and body license. No, you voted to re, to, okay, a mechanical license, the body shop license. Is going to come up now. I would expect the the fire department has no objection whatsoever to the mechanical license. Okay, that makes sense. The building and the equipment passes for that. The question now is the body shop license. Okay, if we could, haven't even read the, I'm, I'm if I could I'm just confused. take exception with that and let the, the the council know that we've already have an existing repair license for that location. Right. We've had that for many years. But I'm just going by what's on the agenda, and I'm asking so, you a question. I want to make sure I know what I'm voting on. You would, you're not. The the goal here is to get the council to approve our application for an auto body. I, I understand license. that. I'm asking. I think what you have there is you have a mechanical license. It's been there, is that correct? We haven't spoken on that. It was in force. The application was remade for mechanical and body. Okay? The question is that the mechanical license is no problem with whatsoever. The question is on the body. He doesn't have the proper equipment, according to the fire department, to do it, according to the regulations of the fire department and the mass laws that apply there. Question now would be whether or not the council would like to okay the body shop license and then hold the license until such time that the proper equipment is installed and then inspected by the fire department. And then the license, if it's okay, would be issued. Okay? And, and what my client has said is that it's going to take a capital improvement of over $100,000 to, to put the body put that spray booth in, in that once that spray booth is in, then the fire department has agreed to come back out and inspect it that's, that's and approve of it. Council, but we need, we need to have the council vote Jenny, on that's, the... That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm going to make right a motion. Now he doesn't have that equipment. So what they can do is vote on the license, but they will hold the license until such time that that equipment is installed. Once it's installed and the fire department okays it, the license will then be turned over to them. It's no different than what's been done here for years. All right. Now there are no there are no loopholes here or what whatever you're looking for. It's very simple. David knows it. Mr. He's President, been, he's been in the business a long time. The legal counsel just wants to chime in here for I'm just second. trying to explain a little bit easier that it, it it would act as like a conditional grant if the city council were to vote tonight. It would act as a conditional license subject to a final approval by the fire department. That's fine. That's yep. So what the hell is it? But so we're still on North Cary Street. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We haven't gone. That's what I'm asking. Okay. We're still on North Cary Street. All right. So the motion. Will uh, I'd like to make a motion to grant pending an approval for the fire department. Second. Second. I'm, Motion's been made and, and seconded on that. M M Mr. Chairman. We already, we already did that. We already two different licenses. We're voting on, no, on, the, not on, the, on the bottom body. Mr. Chairman. We're doing the question. Yes, um, I'm somewhat uh, confused. Um, are we still on um, number three? Yes. 
We're on number three. This is where we are now, right? Okay. Yeah. We're on number three. Number three. There's two licenses. And Mr. Chairman? Council Fowler. With respect to Councilor Rodriguez's yeah. motion, uh, I assume he's including the same stipulations with the auto repair license, am I correct? Correct. Thank you, sir. Motion was made and seconded. All in favor of that? Opposed? So granted. Thank you very much. So we, we all have a clear understanding of what, what transpired. Okay, so don't go too far because you'll be up for the next one as well. Mr. President, right. point of information, I'd Council. like to I'd like to just get an understanding to the people that are here and watching on TV. So we just accepted a condition precedent upon the investment of $100,000. Then he'll notify the city clerk. City clerk will then have the fire department going for a final inspection, and then it'll be the condition is removed. Right. Correct. Correct. Great. Thank you. You're Thank correct. You. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, item number four. Petition of David Lynch, Lynch's Towing, 30 Quincy Street, Brockton, Mass., for motor vehicle repair body license, located at 790 West Chestnut Street, Brockton and Clerk's Office, July 19, 2018. Hearing is signed for August 27, 2018, at 7 p.m. All paperwork is on file. The fire department has objections to the motor vehicle body license. It's, the, again, the same the same thing that we just went through about the equipment not being in there for body shop. Correct. It's, it's, our presentation is identical to the previous one. Uh, and the only difference is, is that presently we do not have a repair license over on West Chestnut Street, whereas on North Cary we did have a repair license. No, sir, did you finish reading? What's that? You were done reading? And the other, the other difference is Mr. Lentz just did purchase this building in the last year. Attorney, attorney can you just, can you just hold on? We have, he hasn't finished reading what, what's before oh, us. And then I'll open up a public hearing again, okay? It's the difficult to hear. I thought you had a question for me. I'm Thank sorry. Thank you. Ter it's terrible in here. The fire department has no objections to the mechanical license up there, just the body shop license. And the same thing as we talked at 210 Carey Street. Once the equipment is in, passed, and Okay. You're all set, Mr. Clerk? Yep. Okay. All right, time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. If there's anybody here in favor of, please, uh, again, state, just state your name, attorney, uh, so we have it on record for this particular. That's you. You are the attorney, right? Yes. I Jay McLaughlin on behalf not of a David. Twin to you, I'm sorry, no. again, I okay. can't hear. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Jay McLaughlin and, and, and on behalf of David Your presentation is the same as what you had for? Same as before, thank you. Okay. Mr. David Lynch, anything? You want to add anything to it? The only thing I'd like to ask is that I have the repair license. I, the fire department was good with my repair license. I'll get the body shop license done first on Cary Street. But if I can get the repair license, so that way it's, if you people please approve this tonight for the repair for 790, I would greatly appreciate it. And then when I get the second spray booth in, I will contact the clerk so we can get the fire department sign off on the spray booth. Correct. So we'll get, Thank you so much. We'll get, we'll get the first part taken care of. Anyone else here in, uh, in favor of that wants to be um, heard? Seeing none, I declare that part of the hearing closed. Anybody here in opposition? Opposition? Seeing none, I declare that part of the hearing closed. And this one is located in uh, West Chestnut Street, which is in, uh, in my area. And welcome. I welcome you. Um, any other questions? So at this point, Mr. we would be going. Motion to grant. Second. Mr. Chairman. Motion to grant, and that's the mechanical part of the license. Mr. Chairman, just on, on, on the motion, I know it's Fowl. the same stipulations as North Cary Street, but how about number of vehicles in the building and out front? Or are, are you having, you're going to store vehicles inside the building for yes. the body shop? Yes. Yeah. I've, and I've gone through zoning, uh, used car, and my garage license, and it's stipulated on my license. Okay. Yes. So you'll meet the stipulations on that license? Yeah, they, they've already put them on there, sir. Okay, but, but you'll still meet the hours of operation, the days of the week, as we did with North Cary. That is correct. They gave me a 24-hour storage, a 24-hour towing license from zoning. Keep everything behind the building, use cars out front, use cars behind the fence, I mean, uh, repaired cars behind the fence, yes. Yeah, just wanted it on the record. Thank no you. No problem at all, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The motion's been made and seconded. We're, we're granting right here the vehicle repair mechanical. All in favor? Opposed? Vehicle mechanical has been, the vehicle repair mechanical has been granted and we will hold. Question mark. 
The question will be on the um, on Make a motion on the to shop. recommend favorably the Second. repair license, body repair license, pending approval by the fire department. Motion, Second. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? So be. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Everyone, thank you, and I'm so sorry for the phone calls, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Just have them drive by my house slowly, please. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Clerk. We have a petition of sign design 170 Liberty Street, Brockton, for a sign permit located at Marion Brothers, 137 Main Street, Brockton. Refer to public safety. We have the petition of Smart Device Solutions, LLC, Kyle Carbaro, for a second hand articles license located at 200 West K Drive. Refer to public safety. We have the report of the Ordinance Committee for its meeting of July 25th, 2018. Accepted and placed on file. Report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of August 20th. Council Nicastro, you had a question? I do have a question. The minutes that I received from uh, the Auditing Department list no details of the resolve that we heard last week that I sponsored uh, regarding the parties. And so I, I I would like to suggest, I'd like the opportunity to go back to Mel and ask her to um, add more details. Well, is she talking, are you talking council of the council meeting? I can't hear you. Council meeting or the finance, finance meeting? Finance committee meeting. The finance right now, this is for the. No, we already did the. the, uh, the uh, we did the ordinance. Committee. We, we did, did the ordinance and we went yeah. to the, yeah. And we're so on finance. If you want, you could put it, I suppose, subject to audit. If you're not ready to accept it, I suppose you could make a motion to make it subject to audit until such time that it's reviewed and your council's happy with the minutes. All right, then I will make a motion to accept item number eight subject to audit. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? And Mr. Clerk will uh, handle that at this point. Yeah, we're going to okay. number nine, right? Number nine. Yeah. From the mayor informing the city council that he will be traveling out of state to find it on Wednesday, August 22nd, and returning Saturday, August 25th, 2018. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the chief of the Brockton Police Department requested that the city council authorize the acceptance and expenditures of the total grant in the amount of $218,549.68 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, State 911. Department of Physical 19 State 911 Training Grant, an EMD slash regulatory compliance grant for the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 19 State 911 Training Grant, an EMDR regulatory compliance grant fund. The funding will be used to reimburse overtime for ETD police officers and fire department emergency medical dispatch personnel to attend 16 hours of mandatory E911 continuing education training for annual certification and to pay the state 911 department approved certified training vendors to conduct classes at the Brockton Police Department. No match is required. Accepted and placed on file. Recommended uh, from the mayor. Recommended. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Chief of the Police Department. Request the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditures of the total grant in the amount of $315,586 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, State 91, Department Fiscal 19, Public Safety Answering Point, and Regional Emergency Communication Center Support an incentive grant, strike that, yes, an incentive grant to the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 19, Public Safety Answering Point, and Regional Emergency Communication Center support, an incentive grant fund. This funding will be used to backfill both ETD and police dispatch. We, we can't hear him. Incurred from 9 one We can't hear To 6 19 and any associated overtime costs to replace said personnel, as well as to pur purchase seven filing cabinets for the E91 Center. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. From the mayor, in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council authorize the 
acceptance and expenditure of total grant in the amount of $20,000 from Mass Department of Public Health, Bureau of Substance Addiction Services, First Responders, and a Loxid grant to the City of Proctor Police Department, Fiscal 2019, First Responders, Mr. and a grant Excuse program me. fund. Due to the uh, circumstances, I'm going to make a motion to dispense with the readings of the communications. The public, and we can't hear them anyways, and they're no. all on file. We can do that. Most of them number, made. Up to number 51 so the on the agenda. The communication's only up through number 51. All right. We're Motion gonna... made and seconded. Okay, so we're going to go up to item. The communications is all I'm making a motion to dispense with. Exactly. So yeah. motion been made and seconded. That we're, we're just going to waive. All in favor of that? Opposed? So be it. I am opposed to it. Denying the people the right to hear what's going on. The president. We're an unfinished business then. Exactly. So we'd now be starting at 51, unfinished business. Okay. Mr. President, you just Counselor. Yeah. have to accept and place those all on file, up to number 51. Oh, number 51, right? Accept and place on file, right? Yep. Okay. No, well set. Okay, here we go. An ordinance amending section 27-29 of the revised ordinances of the city of Brockton. Section 27-29, Section 1, Principal Permitted Uses, is hereby amended by adding the following to subsection G after the words retail store or shop, including wine and malt beverage stores. Favorable. In Council, March 12, 2018, ready refer to the Standing Committee on Ordinances and Planning. Those reports were favorable. City Council, July 23, 2018, Passed to a third reading by a roll call vote. Question is on ordination by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Asak? Yes. Beauregard? I don't know because I didn't hear anything. We're on number 52. 52. Number 52. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, that one? Yes. Cruz? No. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Castro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's 10 in the affirmative, 1 in the negative. The ordinance is ordained. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail. Motion. Second. Motion has been made and seconded for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail. All in favor? All opposed? Reconsideration fails. An ordinance of many revised ordinances of the City of Brockton, Chapter 19, Article 1, Section 19-1 to substitute section 19-1 its entirety, favorably as amended in City Council, July 23, 2018, passed with third reading as amended in Council, April 23, 2018, <clears throat> ready refer to the Standing Committee on Ordinance, that report was favorable as amended. In Council, July 23, 2018, amendment passed by roll call vote, passed with third reading as amended. Questions on ordination Mr. by President, roll call vote? Can we just have a brief, um, description of what this ordinance is, some of these ordinances because it's been some it's been a it's while long. That, that particular item there um, uh, mr. clerk what was the uh, I know 19-1 was um, 19 -1, you want to call mr. It. president what, That's council, if I could as chairman of the ordinance uh, council, I just I just I, I'm gonna defer to uh, councilor at large Rodriguez who filed this but let me just be clear we vetted this out as an ordinance committee on two separate occasions once in the uh, Rom little theater at Brockton High School and, and once here in this uh, war memorial, we had standing boy at the podium, we had the police chief who supported this endeavor. Uh, I know that the unions, both the superiors and the officers union representatives support this endeavor. So with that being said, through you, Mr. President, I'd like to have uh, the council that filed this. Uh, we always talk about adding more uh, public safety and this is exactly what this does and it actually adds a lot of cops on the street. So it's a beneficial thing. Moses, the floor is yours. Quick description, Councilor. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, this was an ordinance that we filed to uh, augment the police department's uh, supervisor's role in the streets. Uh, I think it's important that, you know, and thank you, Council Sullivan, from, for bringing this up. Uh, this is an ordinance that we filed, and, and I wanted to make sure that it's clear to the people that are watching us at home. I know the, the colleagues here know it well, but it, it almost made it sound like we were, we were taking police officers off the rolls and sending them to another town somewhere, when in fact all we're doing was promoting within the department to basically have more police supervisors in the streets. So the argument that we, that we had heard in the past I think should be null in the sense and we should move forward with this. 
Because you know what? We cannot continue on this body to vote and unvote, vote and unvote. You know, we have a, a duty to the taxpayers in this community to move forward and do the things that we need to do, and I think it's time we start acting as such. So I'd like to move forward with this particular thing. Thank you, thank you, Council. Mr. President, a question. Just again, as Chairman of the Ordinance Committee, I do just want to make it clear, because we vetted this out on two occasions, and what was made clear to that five-member board was that any police officers that get elevated up to, uh, to an officer's role, the, the, the spot that they're going to be elevated from will get backfilled because there was a misnomer that we would be losing street cops, and the people that do get promoted will also be on the streets. There's only going to be one uh, su superior at the station, and I just want to make that clear for those that don't sit on the Ordinance Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank Questions you. on ordination by a roll call vote, Madam Mr. Clerk? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President. Councilor Fowell. Notwithstanding what uh, Councilor Sullivan said, I believe Councilor DeCastro would like to speak and I would like to speak. This is now final passage, and I think that all of the information should come out, the implications for what this means to the community, and we owe it to the residents. So I would certainly defer to anyone else, and then I would like to have an opportunity okay, to speak. Okay, Councilor Nicastro. Thank you very much. Good evening. I've spent a lot of time researching this ordinance. The, on the face of this ordinance, it doesn't say, and these supervisors will be on the street. It just says that it makes these, the, the supervisors enumerated in this proposed ordinance. I spent a lot of time in my service to Ward 4 working with the police as time has gone on. And I support the police department 100% and I admire the police officers that I've worked with. I think, in my opinion, from speaking with police officers and from listening to testimony, like what was said at a Ward 2 meeting in the wintertime. We don't have adequate police staff to answer calls promptly, all calls promptly. It was said at my Ward 4 police meeting. Last week when Chief Crowley stood there talking about the first week in July, he said we didn't have the staff to put on more police officers. And that's why we weren't responsive to so many of the calls. In fact, so many of the calls didn't even get answered. I, I think the, the, the answer is, for me, I, I want the police officers that we have to be safe as they keep our residents safe, especially on the 4 to midnight and the midnight to 8 shifts. That's where it counts the most on so many instances. But I don't see this ordinance doing that on, on the face of it. And so I, I, I support the police 100%. But I, I'm not persuaded that this ordinance achieves my goal. And so therefore, I believe I must vote no on this this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Council Fowell. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Council. I, I commend the Councilors who advanced this issue. But in life, everything is timing. Let me tell you the implications to the city if this ordinance receives final approval. In your FY19 budget book, which we just approved, there is a line item for the cost for sergeants, there's a line item for the cost for lieutenants, there's a line item for the cost for captains. You will be adding $500,000 in the next year's police budget for these four positions. And that's based on nothing more than looking at what the sergeants and the lieutenants are now paid. I took the lowest paid lieutenant and the lowest paid sergeants, multiplied by three for the sergeants, multiplied by one for the lieutenants, and it's $500,000 we're committing to the police department if we approve this without knowing next year's budget pressures, without knowing next year's school needs, without knowing next year's level of aid. That just does not seem like the prudent thing to do. The 11 of us here are supposed to be the group of reason and common sense. But now let's take a look operationally at what this will do to the police department. Officer Ullman and Officer Drain just retired. You're down two patrolmen. You have two other promotional positions that are coming up in the ordinary course of business. If you approve these four, you are taking eight patrolmen out of the patrol force probably by the end of this year, by the time this is published and the lists are requested 
and the promotional opportunities come before this council, you are taking eight patrolmen out of the patrol force and you will not replace them until the new recruits are appointed and they graduate from the academy next May or June. There isn't anybody in this city that doesn't know we need more patrolmen. If you need more teachers, you don't turn around and hire an assistant superintendent and three principals. If you need more salespeople, you don't hire a vice president of sales and three man sales managers. The issue isn't whether this is a good idea, because I think it is under the right circumstances, and if we had more inf information. The issue is, is it a good idea now? Does it benefit the city of Brockton? It will benefit the people being promoted, and I know what that's like. I got promoted, I was ecstatic. I also know what it's like to die on the top of a list because your list runs out, you've got to take another exam, you've got to hopefully compete and end up in that list. But the implications to the residents, if this is approved, it does nothing for them. And I'm not saying by keeping the added patrol officers we're going to negate crime, although I will say the more people you have on the street, the greater opportunity you have to hopefully interdict crime, stop it when it's happening, or make an arrest after it's happened. But to take eight people out of the patrol force between now and next June is just nuts as far as I'm concerned. I would favor, although I know it won't happen, I can count noses, I would favor tabling this until next June, finding out where we are budget-wise, what pressures are facing this community, and what level of state aid we could reasonably accept, or what other revenues have come into the city, and I'd be perfectly willing to go forward. I might even be willing to go forward with two sergeants. You could put one on the 12 to 8, one on the 4 to 12, and even though they will be patrol supervisors, none of us has day-to-day -day control over the police department. So for those of you who say, well, we're going to be putting people out on the street, really it's just a glorified patrolman, we have no control over that. We have no idea what the shift commander may need to do with a, with a sergeant on that shift. So I would just implore you to think about the ramifications, the financial ramifications, the operational ramifications, and the dire need to add police officers, patrolmen, to this police department. And then once we do that, by all means, let's, let's do an operational audit of the police department. Maybe we need more sergeants than this ordinance proposes. I don't know. I don't know the last time the police department looked at a reorganization. But I can't support this. And, and I'm sorry to say that, and I know there's some police officers here. I have a great affection for 7 Commercial Street, spent some of the best years of my life there. But now I have to make a decision that reflects what's in the best interest of the city. It's an uncomfortable position to be in, but I can't support this. This is just, it's the right idea at the wrong time. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Mr. President. Councilor uh, Azak. I just actually want, my original question was, is it possible maybe this question is to the clerk, can we, when we have these agendas, can we just put a little bit of a title of what these ordinances go to, because that was my original question. I just wanted to know, because we don't all, if we're not on the ordinance committee, we don't always have the article numbers. Also, are you asking for clarification? Yes, of the please. Audit? You've read it, it's finished the third reading. Yes, We've I understand. Had this material right. three times. I understand, Mr. Clerk. What I just wanted a little, do? maybe even when they're originally written in the agenda, if they could just be a little bit clearer, Over so even people at home. What can we do? It says three readings. No, I understand that, I and I understand once it once it, I knew which uh, ordinance it was. I, I understand the ordinance. I just wanted it. If uh, there's a way that we could just clarify it on the agenda, so we know which one it I'm, is. I'm that's sure. All. The, I'm sure the clerk can make some Thank type you. of a small small clarification. But just keep in mind too, even if you went on computer and brought it up, it's going to give you identification of what it is as well. So I'm just telling you as well. So, any other questions in regards to Council Borgard? Thank you, Mr. President. This is one of these awkward things because I believe in the people that work hard, getting a promotion, having opportunities. But I, I believe that uh, this is one of these situations where we started in the middle and not at the beginning. Um, I'm with my colleague to the left here. I Seven Commercial Street is in Ward 5, and I deal with a lot of people at the police station. We find ourselves contacting the police often. To me, actually, 
I believe before we vote on this, we should have had an audit of what Brockton and the police department need in the 21st century with the fourth largest school system in the Commonwealth with almost 100,000 people and the hopes, I repeat, the hopes that we'll begin to see more growing businesses in this community and new ones coming to this community that are positive and economically beneficial to this community. So we're stuck here. We have these hardworking people that deserve an opportunity for promotion. I can't imagine how difficult the exams are, and I'm sure at different stages in your life it becomes even more challenging. But at the same time, when we deal with situations, when we have a call taker respond, well, we don't know when the police are coming, or uh, we don't see the patrol cars driving around in our community or walking around for someone that spends a great deal of time downtown or riding their bikes because they don't have enough staffing. It's time to revisit the whole police department and quite frankly, how it's operated. I don't pretend to have all the answers, but I'm sure we're not the only community in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts or for that matter in this nation that has had these challenges. And it just seems that we should be looking at how many sergeants we need, how many lieutenants, et cetera, and how many patrolmen. And then looking at the financial aspect of it, because it seems that we all benefit from a safer and better Brockton. So at this point, I don't want to vote yes or no. I want to vote I don't know, because this is, this is where we are with this. We're penalizing the people that have worked hard and taken exams, but at the same time, and then, of course, we have our economic situation, and then we also have the need for more and more patrol offices. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Monaghan? Yeah, just, and I'm on the Ordinance Committee, and this is tough for me because I still, still didn't see a case made for, for these positions. Uh, we need more patrolmen. I don't know how we need more brass. It just didn't make any sense to me. I, I've never voted the cut overtime ever. Uh, I've always supported the police, but I just don't see a need for more brass when we need more patrolmen. And every time that a patrolman's out, if they can't get anybody out, you're, you're replacing them for overtime with brass and costs them more money. So, I mean, I think we need more patrolmen. Now, I'm, I'm willing to make, and if we could make an amendment, I'd just, for, for two sergeants, cut the uh, third sergeant out and the lieutenant out and uh, see how we come back and visit this next year. But. I vote for what's right, what I think is right. I'm not trying to screw anybody or anything else like that. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I'd amend it to, for two sides and look, let's look to next year for the, the fall and see what we need. <coughs> Anyone else before I go back to Coun Council Sullivan? Mr. President, if I could, just go down memory lane. When I was Council President last year, this was before, the only people that didn't hear this endeavor were Gene and Sue. That's it. This has been vetted out. The only reason it didn't get a, a yes or a no last year was because the legislative session ended yeah. and it died. So Councilor Rodriguez, to his credit, filed it again. So I mean, for people to say, let's wait for the next budget, that's asinine. We've already waited for this budget. So I mean, it, it, to me, either vote yes or vote no, exactly. but stop dragging it on. To table it would be an insult to everybody, including our esteemed colleague that's been working on it for two plus years. So let's just vote, let's take a vote. I call the vote under Robert's rules. Motion of uh, Councilor Sullivan's call on the vote, and I'm going to call a question on ordination by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? No. Lally? Yes. Monahan? No. Nicastro? No. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Eight in the affirmative. Three in the negative. The ordinance is ordained. Mr. Make President, motion. make a motion for reconsideration. Second. Hopes it doesn't prevail. Motion was made and seconded for reconsideration. Hopes it does not prevail. All in favor? Opposed to reconsideration? Fails. <clears throat> An ordinance to increase access to voter registration in the city of Brockton, favorably as amended in City Council July 23rd, 2018, passed to a third reading as amended. In Council May 14, 2018, read and referred to Standing Committee on ordinance. That report was favorable as amended. Question, okay. Questions on ordination by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The ordinance is ordained. 
Mr. Another? President, I would like to make a motion for reconsideration in the second. Vote. Second. 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 Motion has been made and second for reconsideration. Hopes it does not prevail. All in favor of reconsideration? All opposed? Reconsideration fails. An ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be it ordained as follows. Chapter 2, <laughs> Administration, is hereby amended by adjusting Section 2 135 to reflect the amounts negotiated by the Administration and collective bargaining agreements. Recommendation in Council, March 14, 2018. Ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable. Questions on ordination by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Enary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The ordinance is ordained. An ordinance amending part two of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Article four, financial affairs of Division four, Chief Financial Officer of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton is hereby amended. In Council, March 26, 2018, ready to refer to Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable. Questions on ordination by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Enary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The ordinance is ordained. An ordinance amending Article 5, Departments, Division 7, Department of Personnel, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. The title of the ordinance, Department of Personnel, shall be replaced with Department of Human Resources. In Council, May 29, 2018, ready to refer to Standing Committee on Ordinances. That report was favorable as amended. Questions on ordination by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The ordinance is ordained. An appropriation of 3,000. President. Council Sullivan. I, I was wondering if it's possible, due to the, uh, the dollar value, only $3,400, if we can act on a suspension of the rules tonight. As you may recall, uh, this was something that we picked up during the budget that the mayor had neglected to fund. Yeah. It's a Scrivener's error. It shouldn't say historical society. It should say historical commission. Mission. That's yes. in the form of a motion. If we could act on this under suspension. Tonight. Second. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to <laughs> check those glasses. <laughs> it's so hot in here. I don't know. I almost passed out. Yeah, you better use there is this. a Scrivener's error, though. I got that one right. <laughs> you, you had me confused for a minute there. <laughs> Okay, questions, questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. <laughs> Cruz? Uh, no. Yes, I said, I'm said sorry. Yeah. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Uh, yes. 58. 10 in the affirmative. The uh, order is adopted, <laughs> Council Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> 58. Well, number 59. Yeah, <laughs> Resolved to invite the police chief, John Crawley, and Mayor Bill Carpenter to discuss with the council the policy as to large, loud gatherings at private residences, how it is being enforced, and the scheduling and staffing levels of police department, uh, police personnel, to best respond to incidents and calls from the public on summer weekends and holidays, and in particular, over 30 July, June 30th to July 5th. In council, July 23rd, 2018, Ready to refer to Standing Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Enary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Mr. Mr. President. Uh, I'm going to make a motion. Items 71, 72, and 73 are small grants for traffic enforcement that I wanted to take under suspension of the rules this evening. Mm -hmm. Captain Hallisey is here to take, the only reason I want to take them out of order also is he has to get out of here to meet the uh, line painters. So he is here to answer any questions that we might have. Um, but I'd like to make a motion to take 71, 72, 
and 73 out of order and uh, act under suspension of the rules this Second. evening. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. We're going to take 71, 72, and 73. And On the gonna, motion, Mr. President. Yes, Councilor. Um, I'll go along with this, uh, with this item in the sense, so as long as I'm allowed to ask um, the police chief or the mayor when he comes, when, it, when, when we have the next finan financial council meeting, some questions re with regards to these grants. I mean, certainly I would think it, it, these are grants that we get every year that uh, actually are looking to use to get some painting done before the season goes. I understand that, Mr. President, but I actually did do some homework on these particular grants, and I have some questions that I like to address. I'll go along with uh, moving this forward so that we can act on the on the grants tonight. Well, but to reserve the right to ask the chief well, and the mayor when he comes then, to the finance committee meeting, right, some then, questions. Then what, I, what I will do, we we will move forward in, in in acting on them tonight, and I will make sure that they get placed on the finance committee agenda for discussion. Purposes. It's grants in general, not necessarily the specific grants that we're discussing on these particular well, then, items. Then you need to, why don't we file a, re, why don't you file a resolve, have my, the chief come to the next, next council, why don't you file a resolve? And I would, I would sign that with you, Councilor Rodriguez. Huh? I would sign that with you, Councilor Rodriguez, to have them come in and discuss grants in general. Or yeah. That's what I would do. Questions and grants in general. Exactly, that's what we're doing. And then you can have every right to question these particular ones because Naturally, they're, they're, they're before the, you know, the council, naturally. So why don't you do that? Okay. Okay? That would be the best way. Okay, so the motion Mr. was President, made and sir? seconded. Yes. We're going to act on items number 71, 72, and 73. And I'm sorry, I think Captain Hallisey left. I think he had to be at 8 o'clock with the line painters. <laughs> He's still here? He was here. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Motion. Yes. Oh, no, I wasn't on the motion. I was going with well, the next. We're working, uh, we haven't done 71, 72, 73. A motion's been made yeah. to suspend the rules and act on them this evening, and everybody was all in favor. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Opposed? Okay. Okay. So now, I didn't think we re we didn't even read them. To be truthful. No. no. So, Mr. Clerk, would you please read 71, 72, 73? Oh, wait a minute. I, I thought you were going to do them collectively. You're going to do them collectively? Yeah, we'll do them collectively. Okay, we'll do I'm them sorry. collectively. Mm -hmm. Yes. We'll do them collectively, I'm sorry. This thing I'm just going to hold on to, I'm better exactly. off. Exactly, that's the best way. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> An appropriation. Got a little ants up here. Mm. Go ahead. An appropriation of the total grant award in the amount of $6,344.95 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Highway Safety Division, Fiscal 18 Traffic Enforcement Grant Program to City of Brockton Police Department, Highway Safety Division, Fiscal 18 Traffic and Enforcement Grant Fund Program. An appropriation of the total grant award in the amount of $2,400 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Highway Safety Division, Fiscal 18 Traffic Enforcement Grant Program, to City of Brockton Police Department, Traffic Enforcement Grant Program Fund. An appropriation of the total grant award in the amount of $9,187.66 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Highway Safety Division, Fiscal 18 Sustained Traffic Enforcement Grant STEP Program to the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 18 Sustained Traffic Enforcement Grant STEP Program Fund. The questions on granting, I'm sorry. Questions on adoption no, wait, wait, by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Enary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. Those orders have been adopted. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go you. back to 60. 60. Number 60. Order that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Baldwin Road extending from Colgate Road westerly and northerly to Vale Street. For that purpose, it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Brockton. Refer to the Committee on Finance and Planning. Order that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants 
of the City of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Boundary Circle extending from Randolph Avenue easterly and northerly to Brookville Avenue. For that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street hallway of said City of Brockton. Refer to the Committee on Finance and Planning. Order that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the City of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Braintree Avenue extending from Boundary Circle westerly and northerly to Brookville Avenue, a distance of about 600.48 feet. And for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away of said city of Brockton. Referred to finance and planning. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Vale Street, Please. extending from Norwich Road westerly to Upton Street, a distance of about 636.65 feet, and for that purpose, it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away of said city of Brockton. Refer to the Committee on Finance and Planning. We have an appropriation of the total grant award in the amount of $218,549.68 from the Executive <laughs> Office of Public Safety and Security State 911 Department Fiscal 19 State 911 Training Grant and EMD Regulatory Compliance Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department Fiscal 19 State 911 Training Grant <coughs> and EMD Regulatory Compliance Grant Fund. Mr. President. Council, Council Boy, you had a question on this particular item? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. No, the reason I'm bringing this up is I had submitted from the grant writer for the police department, seven items, and, and they were they asked me to vote for them under suspension of rules because they're for FY19, and I know that um, I had 68 and 69 and 70, and also the ones that Councillor Cruz had uh, mentioned. But I well, believe that one of them was also yours that you had submitted for um, the grant that, that, that would, would start for FY19, which technically was July 1st, but because of the state um, voting and movement. So I, I just, I wanna mention that as we go, go forward here, because we've already had the month of July and the month of August that have been part of FY19. Okay, so so what are you what are you trying to? Well, I mean, I know that I was hoping that we could suspend under the rules sixty eight and sixty nine and seventy, and also there was a public safety um, the the uh, others that were sixty four and um, sixty seven from the police department under grants that were coming from the state. Well, councils, that's up to. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, why, why, why are you telling these people this is what we're going to do before we even have discussion on it? I mean, you know, okay, these are on our agenda, I'm sorry, our, no, 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 but that was, that, was what, that was requested that, yeah, I, I, so that I, they could have the funding and begin the process. I, I, understand, I understand that, but I just don't think that's the right, that, that's, that's just not the right thing to be doing. Okay. I, we'll just have a finance meeting. We're going to have a finance meeting on, on um, the first Wednesday in September anyways. So, you know, we'll just take them up at that particular point in time, just like um, we've always done. I'm sorry. Okay. We're, we're going to have it on the first? Probably be Wednesday. What's the Wednesday, Wednesday. the 5th? Okay, thank you. Thank right? you. Okay. So we'll have it Wednesday the 5th is when it will be. The 5th. Okay. Yeah. Then, okay. That's, then, that, then that's... That'll be fine. That we were under the impression it would be, yes. Okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to diffuse you in anything, Council, but you no. just can't... I know you go everywhere throughout the city, and I'm, I'm not trying to nitpick, but you can't just tell, oh, don't worry, I'm going to take care of it. You, 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 you can't. It just can't be done that way. Uh, everything can't just be done that way. If it be done that way, then why do we need government then? You know no, what I mean? I, know, I, 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 under, I understand what okay. you're saying. We'll take but care the of confusion it. was that we weren't sure when the next finance committee yeah, was. So we'll thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councilor. Yes, yes, yes. We're back to item number 65. Four? Did we do four? 64, yeah, we 65. Did. Yeah. Total appropriation of $100,000 for an unappropriated estimate receipts of the general fund, fiscal 19. To fire department capital. Council Sullivan. Mr. President, uh, historically, this council doesn't take under suspension of rules big dollar amounts. Um, but just a piece of information on this this $100,000, as you may recall, during the budget, uh, Fire Chief Williams came before yeah. us. He said it would cost about 100 grand. 
to, uh, to retire the parking lots at the fire station. Uh, at that time, this body, through you, asked if we could get it from the mayor. Right. Uh, the same thing with the 8,000 on the next agenda item on the tourniquets that Mr. Cruz and I filed. So on this one, due to the fact that we know what it's for, the fire chief came before us already. It, it, it's kind of repetitive to have him come back. It's for the paving of certain fire stations in the city of Brockton. I am going to respectfully ask my colleagues to act on the suspension rules on this, this specific agenda item. Second. Motion has been made and seconded that we're going to act on this particular item this evening by suspending the rules. All in favor of that? Opposed? Um, Madam Clerk, you need to call the roll for adoption. Azak? Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darren Oncourt? Oh, no. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. And Sullivan? Yes. Okay. The order is adopted. Okay, thank you. Okay, am I ready to go? Okay. 67. An appropriation of the total grant award in the amount of 315000 no, excuse me, Mr. Clerk, we need we're number 66. Oh, I'm sorry, 66, 66. strike that. 66. Total appropriation of $8,000 from unappropriated estimate receipts of the general fund, fiscal 19, to police department ordinary maintenance. <coughs> Council Sullivan. Mr. President, just uh, again, I'm going to ask that we act on the special rules on this. This is $8,000 again. It's $200, uh, what was it, $200 per, uh, per officer, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah, for the... Or 400 I can't remember. But, but at the end of the day, what it's going to be for $8,000, every sworn officer is going to have on their person a tourniquet and a holder that they'll have on their person. Again, police officers came to Tim and I to file a resolve after the murder of Sergeant Gannon on the Cape. Yeah. And uh, through you again, and thank I you, Mr. President, the You're mayor welcome. has agreed to the $8,000. So, again, if we could act on the special rules, they could buy these tourniquets and Second. give them to the police officers. Second. Thank you. Second. Motion has been made and seconded with suspending the rules and acting on this this evening. All in favor of that? Opposed? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. And Sullivan? Yes. The order is adopted. Okay, you set for 67? 67. An appropriation of the total grant award in the amount of $315,000. $586 from the Executive Office of the Public Safety and Security, State 911, Department Fiscal 19, Public Safety Answering Point, and Regional Emergency Communication Center Support and Incentive Grant to the City of Brockton, Police Department Fiscal 19, Public Safety, yeah. Answering Point, and Regional Emergency Communication Center Support and Incentive Grant Fund. Referred to finance? An appropriation of the total grant award in the amount of $20,000 from the Mass Department of Public Health, Bureau of Substance Addiction Services, uh, Fiscal 2019 First Responders Naloxone Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 2019 First Responders Naloxone Grant Program Fund. Referred to finance. Mr. Clerk, since I think they're all uh, Executive Office of Public Safety, why don't we just read the total amount, okay? And I'll just refer them to finance. Okay, so we have an appropriation, we're at number 69. 69, yep. An appropriation of $331,062. Refer to the Committee on Finance. We have an appropriation of $30,000. Refer to the Committee on Finance. And we're going to go to 74, I believe. An appropriation of $10,529. Refer to Finance. An appropriation of $4,967.21. Refer to finance. An appropriation of $47,000. Refer to finance. An appropriation of $6,186,098. Refer to the Committee on Finance. All items on the agenda are available in their entirety for review in the City Clerk's Office for all interested parties. Very good. We have uh, two late files. Council Sullivan. Mr. President, if I could, before the late, and one of the late files is mine. I, I, I'm a proud graduate of Brockton High School. Math was on my forte. Uh, so Council Cruz obviously was the mathematician at Brockton yeah. High. But it was 40 bucks per cop, 200 cops. It was the $8,000. Just wanted to put that into the record. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. We hereby appoint Spencer Benoit of 103 Ettrick Street, Brockton, as a special police officer of the city of Brockton for a one-year term ending August 2019. Council Sullivan. 
Yes, actually, this is, um, and the gentleman is here tonight. This is uh, Lieutenant Mills had contacted me. We have the, uh, the great ability to, uh, to have a special police officer, school police officer, uh, someone that is uh, a Brockton person, someone that's trained. Lieutenant Mills said he's ready, willing, and able to hit the ground running. And uh, I'm proud to support this. I am going to act, uh, ask that we act on the special rules. Uh, the Second. gentleman is here tonight. Uh, he can come before us. And uh, I, th I think, really, if, if we can have someone like Lieutenant Mills say, this is the one, we need him, you know, I think we have to listen to that call. So if you don't object, I know the gentleman is here. He is right here. Why don't you, why don't you stand up and just come right to the microphone and introduce yourself to, to us, and at least we know, we know who you are. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Spencer Benoit. I live at 103 Ettrick Street, and uh, I'm here on behalf of you guys to try and get special police powers for the Brockton School Police. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Congratulations, too. Mr. President, yeah. I'd just like to take a minute to say I've known Spencer for a good long years. He's going to be a great addition to the police department. Uh, he's also going to give them a, go a great soccer goalie for a while, but uh, he, is, he and his family are great people, and we're really fortunate to have him coming on the force, and I'm excited to vote for him tonight. That's Thank great. you. Thank you, sir. That's good. I don't know if I want my picture taken next year. I'd be, you know, way down. But anyhow, <laughs> congratulations. Council Sullivan, you made a motion. Did I did make a motion to act as special rules on this matter tonight. Second. 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 Rodriguez? Yes. And Sullivan? Yes. The order is adopted. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Make a motion Council for reconsideration. Hopes it doesn't prevail. Second. Motion's been made and seconded for reconsideration. Hopes it does not prevail. All in favor of reconsideration? All opposed? Reconsideration fails. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. We have another late file. We have an order by Councilor Lally, Jack Lally that the DPW was authorized to issue four sewer connections to Gary Latsovitz for the property located at Melrose Avenue, plots one, two, three, and four. Council Lally. Mr. President, uh, I would ask that we uh, move on this under suspension of the rules tonight. Uh, this is just a standard sewer connection. Uh, Ward 6 still has its sewer moratorium, oh, so these things have to come up. But uh, this gentleman has, his proposal has already gone through all the proper boards and committees. I hosted a meeting for the residents so the developer could uh, explain it. Uh, so they've, they've well, gone did. through everything. I don't see the need to uh, hold them up for another it. month. Second. Motion has been made and second that we suspend the rules enacted in this President. this evening. Councilor, I'll follow on the, question, on the motion. It, not that I object, but for some of the counselors who have been here much longer than I have, shouldn't we read something into the record about the anticipated consumption per day? Are there, are there, any, are there any restrictions or any other actions that the council... Point, point of information. All we're technically doing is allowing the uh, DPW commissioner to grant a, a connection and all the specifics are the same as any other sewer connection. That, right. So technically we're just granting the... DPW Commission the ability to uh, okay the connection. Thank you, Councilor. Thank Cruz. you. Just keep in mind, Councilor, as, as Councilor Lally said, it's the only ward that still has. Some years back, yeah. other wards had it, but, but other councils just stopped it at some point. But this, it just never happened, and the council before him kept it kept it going. So that's why it still has to be done this way. Mm -hmm. um, further, further point of information. I think it may be time that we get the DPW commissioner in to look and what, exactly. see yeah. whether we still need this in Ward 6. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. Yeah. So motion was made and seconded on, on the motion. Uh, uh, that was all set. Uh, um, for adoption, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Azak? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. And Sullivan? Yes. The order is uh, adopted. Any... Uh, any other late files? Anything else, Council Sullivan? Or? I don't have a late file. Could I have a moment of personal privilege? Sure, Council. I, I just want to inform the members of the Ordinance Committee that I, I have spoken to Attorney Resnick, and we will be having a meeting here, and it will be sec September 6th, 6 p.m. I believe September 6th is a Thursday night, and we'll be here. Uh, so it's the week. It's the week of Labor Day, uh, and we'll be here a Thursday night next week uh, at six o'clock. Yep. Thank you, Council. We'll see you all then. And then uh, I, I didn't anticipate. I was looking. Maybe we wouldn't have to have a. Uh, 
other than one finance meeting, but having business before us, we'll, we will have a finance meeting, and it will be Wednesday evening, September 5th, here at 7 p.m. So that's Wednesday evenings, uh, September 5th at, uh, at 7 p.m. Any, uh, anything else to come before this uh, body this evening, before the fleas eat me up here? We're all set. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>